Hi, this is the fourth video in the playlist where we're looking at the Edexcel higher tier paper and it's for November 2017. In the previous video we completed through to question number 21. So we're going to be finishing this uh, series with uh, the final few questions on this particular paper complete, uh, starting from question number 22. Um, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. Okay, so question number 22, um, we've got two triangles in the diagram are similar. Okay, find the two possible values of x. Well, it's a bit, um, bit of an interesting one, this, because on first glance, it looks like as it's drawn, you've got um, a fairly clear scale factor between AE through to AD. OK, so let's just have a look at that, because essentially we've got two scenarios and they are both kind of uh, can be summarised as which side is the scale factor. Okay, now let me kind of explain that if I can a little bit. That as it's drawn, we've got case one, okay? And case one is where we've got AE times the scale factor makes AD. Okay, and that's, that's actually as it's drawn. Okay, so I can put as drawn, okay? The second uh, case, which is the bit that they're kind of referring to, is where we've got AE times the scale factor makes AC. Now that's going to be a little bit tricky to actually draw, but if you can imagine what I'm doing is I'm taking this triangle and I'm flipping it over to that side. So uh, I get a situation where this triangle now becomes a e which is a value of 12 and that then is scale factored to a c okay so i've taken this what was this edge and I've moved it and flipped it over. So a little bit difficult to visualize, particularly the way that they've drawn this. Um, it does make it quite hard, I think, to actually see these things. But um, it will take a little bit of time, but you could kind of work it out. Um, you might be better off thinking that actually this comes um, a bit like this, where this bit is a e and that would be 12 so that's the other way of kind of thinking about these things very hard to see but hopefully you'll be able to get the idea that you've got two scenarios one where it's drawn and then another way you've got to flip the triangle um, a b e over in order to superimpose it upon the larger triangle okay so um, we've got two scenarios that we can look at we've got case one which is the first one okay and hopefully this will be fairly straightforward that I've got a e okay and that's multiplied by a scale factor which I'm going to call k times a d okay and I could just basically plug in the information I've got a e is 12 I'm going to multiply it by, by some sort of scale factor to make it 15. So therefore, I can say that k equals 12 over 15. All right. So therefore, if I want to work out um, the value, let's say, of a, b, OK, therefore, a, b. OK, so I've got this, uh, if I go back here. A, B, I can use the scale factor in order to work out the value of X because A, B is going to be equal to um, 12 fifteenths of A, C. OK, now it might be a little bit easier just to sort of reduce that fraction a little bit to four fifths. So I can say that A, B is eight and that's four fifths of AC, okay, these little dots just mean multiply, and when I calculate that through, I'm going to get that 10 equals AC, okay. Now, I've missed out again, just for the sake of the video, I've missed out a few calculation steps of how I would do that, okay, but basically you've got 8 divided by 4 over 5, which is the same as saying 
8 multiplied by 5 over 4 and that will give you then a value of AC okay so therefore because we know that AB is 8 then in this case X will equal 2 and that's case 1 okay let's have a look then at case 2 where we're going to use just a slightly different relationship and what we're going to say in case 2 is that AB okay which we know is 8 is equal to a scale factor times AD okay so AB is 8 and the scale factor we don't know but we do know that AD is 15 okay so K must equal 8 over 15 okay so therefore we can now work out AE okay so AE is going to equal to 8 fifteenths of AC uh, sorry AE when we flip it over onto the new triangle and then we've got AE is going to be 12 which is equal to 8 15 times AC and again you need to calculate that through for yourself but we're going to say then that AC equals 22.5 okay now if AC equals 22.5 then it will mean that X in that particular case is going to equal 14.5 so they are actually very very different triangles if we use those different scale factors okay so a little bit tricky to kind of follow through but hopefully you've been able to follow through my working there is again a playlist on the channel that relates to similar triangles okay so let's move on then to question number 23 this is a much much more straightforward question i think um, and hopefully um, that will then complete our uh, working through this whole paper so question number 23 Okay, question 23. Here is a rectangle, a right angle. All the measurements are in centimetres. Find the set of possible values of X if the area of the rectangle is greater than the area of the triangle. Okay, mm. all right. Okay, so let's have a look at how we're going to work that out. Well, we've got the area of the rectangle. Okay, so let's have a look at that first. So area of rectangle. Okay, so the area of the rectangle is going to be x minus 1 times 3x minus 2. Okay, so if I now work that through, I'm going to get x times 3x is 3x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 2. Okay, so just to tie that up a little bit, I'm going to get 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. Okay, so that's the area of the rectangle. Let's do a similar exercise with the area of the triangle. So, okay, area of triangle. Okay, well, the formula I tend to use is um, a half base times height. In this particular case, it's just a little bit easier for me. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to leave it as base times height over 2 or a half base times height. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so my base is going to be x and my height is 2x. So I've got that's equal to x times 2x divided by 2 okay so therefore when I work that out I'm going to get 2x squared divided by 2 so therefore my area of the triangle is equal to x squared okay so we've got the area of both now it does say the area of the rectangle is greater than the area of the triangle okay so what we're talking about really is a quadratic inequality okay these are both quadratic equations so I can write now bringing these two equations together 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 is greater than x squared okay and then really it's just a case of working through that okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it okay I'm going to say actually if I bring this x squared over towards the left hand side and make it greater than zero that will mean I've got 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 is greater than zero okay so um 
Well, there's a couple of ways in which you can solve this type of thing. Um, what I tend to do is I tend to multiply the two times plus two, and then I look at the factors that I can use um, to be able to write two common um, factors, okay? You'll see what I mean. If I say two times plus two, well, that's going to be plus four, okay? Well, the factors that multiply together to make plus four are plus four and plus one, and also minus four and minus one. Well, I'm actually interested in minus four and minus one. The reason I am is because when I add those together, I get minus five x. So what I can do is I can actually rewrite this as two x squared minus 4x minus 1x plus 2. I haven't actually created anything different. All I've done is I've said, well, actually, that minus 5x is made up of minus 4x and minus 1x. And the technique then is to factorise the first two terms. So if I factorise those two terms for 2x, I get x minus 2. OK, again, if I factorise these two terms for uh, minus 1, I get x minus 2. So what I've got then is two common factors which I can bring together and I can write this now as bracketed terms of 2x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 is greater than 0. Okay, now that's the technique I use. You might use a slightly different technique or trial and error or something like that. Um, you could almost kind of work that out, I guess, in your head to try to come out with something like that. Um, I tend to use a more formal method because it sort of works for me. Um, and also it means if these numbers get a little bit higher, I've still got a method that I use for all these types of questions. Okay, so... What we're saying then is that um, effectively I've got, if I draw this equation, I've got the roots of the equation as being a positive a half and a positive 2. So if you can imagine, if I, if I make that equal to 0, x minus 2 equals 0, so therefore x must equal 2. And if I make that equal to 0, I've got 2x minus 1 equals 0. So 2x equals 1, so x must equal a half. OK, so basically, if I drew this equation, I would have it looking something like that. OK, where the values are greater than 0. The values of the inequality are greater than 0. So in other words, these values over here, OK, because they're all, this is the, the 0 line, they're all greater than 0. OK, so x is less than a half, okay, and x is greater than 2, okay, does that, hopefully that makes sense to you, that x then, the values of x, because they're greater than 0, are less than a half, and greater than 2, okay, and again, there is a playlist on quadratic inequalities, I think, on the, uh, on the channel, and there certainly are some uh, videos and examples for you to have a look at. Okay, so let's just have a look at the um, possible values of x. Okay, well, we're saying that x cannot be a, less than a half. Now, the reason it can't be less than a half is because if we look at um, our values on the equations, a half minus one would mean this would be minus a half. OK, well, that can't exist. OK, so therefore we can only say that these are the values that matter. So therefore, in this particular uh, possible values of x, all the values of x which are greater than two would be correct for this one. OK, so if I just put a little line in there that says x uh, cannot be um, less than a half as, um, if we have it as a half, it would mean that x minus 1, which is the big, uh, the big sort of rectangular bit here, 
um, would be less than one. Okay, a lot less than one. It would be less than uh, so um, x minus half would be half. Yeah. So it'd be a half minus x, it'd be less than a half. Okay, <laughs> all righty, okay. Hope that's all right for you. Okay, so um, we'll leave it there at the end of this particular video. It's been quite a difficult final few questions to this particular paper, but I hope you have found it useful. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything and also have a look at the playlists on the channel and there are further examples and other walkthroughs with other GCSE exams. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.